Hello and welcome to the Slim Dog Sessions live from the Music Bahnhof Anna Hütte. Uh, we are here today with Jaguar, who have some songs for us. When you're ready.
Wow, that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. This is uh, Oyemi, Lemmy, and Chris. They are Jaguar. And uh, you describe yourselves as uh, three whatevers uh, philosophizing about finding a soundscape. Uh, seems very fitting to the resulting sound as it's so full of texture, so full of atmosphere. Uh, my first question would be, how is it to find this soundscape? It's intense. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it's pretty much uh, surrounding yourself uh, with very different sounds, a lot of them all the time. So sounds are more than what we just, what we can hear out of our amps. It's also what's outside, what's in nature, wh how does a city sound like. So it's a lot of things that influence sound. So we try to be open-minded and see all this, like take all the sounds in that we can find and build something out of this. And yeah, then we have like stuff like this on the floor. So we try to, we try to build something out of this. And of course, out of amps and instruments. So it's more than just some pedals on the floor. It's everything around this. Also drum sounds and yeah, all of that. And in between all of this, I am aware that the lyrics and transmitting a message is something that is very important to you, right? Yes. The uh, thing is, uh, a few years ago, I would have, I might have said <laughs> that I don't feel lyrics are that important for music. I still feel that in a way, because uh, music and art is something that can transmit a message without words. It can be more than words, and that's cool. But also, we try to bring our lyrics and our vocals more forward. Like in future and, 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 and other recordings that we had years ago, we felt like the vocals can be a little bit more in the back and everything a little bit more in the front. Now we also try to get vocals and lyrics more in the front because they are also important. And sometimes music is also not enough to transmit. Uh, message. Sometimes people need something that's like more, yeah, more, that they can grab on. Explicit. Explicit, yeah, <laughs> maybe like that. Yeah, we, maybe we try uh, to, uh, to make everything a bit like, you know, fixed a bit better together, just to make actually music, not just like the soundtrack and, yeah, some stumble words in the background. So, um, actually we really try to get <laughs> really into music and away from just only strong or uh, masturbation stuff, you know, just doing stuff people think to know of us, just only to make, yeah, express ourselves in the best way, <laughs> just, yeah, to make yeah. music, yeah. And I also feel like that um, being on the stage and also releasing music is a good way to spread some important messages. It's not just like, feel good music, everyone just want to hear and dance, and that's cool. I mean, that's, that's cool. <laughs> But uh, it can be more than this. And when you have people that are listening to you, you should use that in a good way. Mm -hmm. And a good way can be to spread awareness for things that are important, not only for us, but for a lot of people in this world. So we try to do that as well. And now the inevitable topic, uh, shoegaze is in the <laughs> is back in the order of the day, uh, and we have all the all the dinosaurs like my bloody Valentine, slow dive. They are they are back. And uh, and these are albums that are 20, 30 years old uh, by this time. And uh, in the meanwhile, Shuge has evolved into something different, to, to new new territories. Uh, so how, how would you how would you describe the scene now, and how do you relate or not to it? Can I say something? I say something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I feel that it's a cool thing that there is this new shoegaze scene, and I feel that there are a lot of new bands finding uh, a sound and a vision or a genre that's way older, and that's cool, and I think things come back all the time. So it's not, it's not surprising that also shoegaze find, found his way back <laughs> into today, and I think that's a great thing, and me being, or us being uh, shoegaze fans, um, I was so happy to see bands that I would not have been able to see again <laughs> back then because I was not even born then. So that's massive and that's cool. And there are so many new shoegaze bands coming up. What I feel what the scene is like nowadays is 
there's a lot of people trying to do what have been done before. Very, uh, taking a lot of inspiration from these older trivia bands, and that's cool. But sometimes I feel there's a lack of new things to bring in into this music. And there are a few bands that we really adore that are doing that, bringing new, a new spirit into the sugar scene. Like uh, Ringo Defstar, for example. Ringo Defstar from yeah. Texas, like they're amazing. And they're evolving. Like every album they released in the past years was different than the one before. They are trying to be one specific thing or try to fit in a box. And this is also inspiration for us because we don't try to fit in a box even if people try to bring us there and to keep us there. We're not trying to do that. We just try to do good music and have influences from so many other genres, and I think that's important. And I wish that more modern shoegaze bands would try to be a little bit more innovative. That's what I wish for, if I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess um, shoegaze at least is for, or was for us, only it's just you know, um, a starting point for the band, maybe, just part of the starting point of the band. Um, to complete this is really to understand that every one of us have made other music before, you know, just doing just some kinds of typical blues and uh, hard rock and yeah, just some screamo and emo stuff, you know, just doing before, before ever, I just getting in touch with stuff like my play Valentine, I just do music 10 years long, you know, just before getting into noise pop and stuff like this. And even just Chris and Oimi have the same year. Same history background, so uh, we just reach out for this music, you know, just and get touched by it, and so we just started to get from there. But our <laughs> our, our background just crawling into us to get yeah, just out of music, you know, doing just really rock or really pop music and uh, reaching for stars and just look what's happened, you know, just the last 30, 40 years, 50 years, just what mm -hmm. else have uh, done, you know. Yeah. Just like David Bowie or Peter Gabriel or, you know, just real guys who were just doing stuff. And Björk following Yeah, else. Björk, Björk already. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, that, that's really quite our really inspiration. And on the way to the point where we just really think it's complete, we just get around two days. Yeah. That's the best way to <laughs> describe it, you know. The that's, the way, yeah. that's the way to describe it <laughs> in a good way, you know. Yeah. I, I like the techniques bands doing there, you know, just expressing stuff. But I don't want it to confirm this band all over in this little shape of sounds. Yes. You know, just I love dry sounds. Uh, I don't even need to get all the time reverb on it and stuff like this. Only to do it like shoegaze, you know. Just yeah. that's. There's more. Uh, yeah. Just a, maybe we just doing some synth pop or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Next record. <laughs> you mentioned the gear before and you have a lot of gear. Uh, Lemmy, how many pedals do you have there on your stand? I uh, don't actually know. I just, yeah, that, that's the thing, you know, I didn't get into the, you know, rehearsal room and say, oh, cool, now I want just to build up 15 pedal boards or something like this, you know. So 15 then. Nah, <laughs> no, it's not, I don't know, I, I didn't count it yet, you know, just, of course, all of this stuff is there, of course, I just really need it for the flight board, it's only for, you know, just getting into to festivals, yeah. actually, this, this is a small board. Uh, yeah, the last, the last festival, and um, we were booked there in Madrid in uh, November, in or November, November yeah. yeah, we need just the flight, uh, a flight case, basically, yeah, mm -hmm. I just built a flight case for, really, which is getting into the uh, into, into the loading. Uh, yeah, into uh -huh. the loading. Yeah, the bigger one was not allowed. Okay, yeah, so. because it was too too heavy. You know, just mm -hmm. I get the biggest one I found, which get into the loading room, and then I get the small board out, and that didn't cut uh, any just you know pedals yeah. out or in. I just really think to get it because it's fancy or whatever. <laughs> it's only there because it has you know just for the for the lineup been. and yeah, yeah for the for the setup we have done on tour so everything is there of course it has to be neat on there it's not to look fancy or whatever and that's why i don't count it you know i just <laughs> yeah get it. It what i did need in this part of the song what i did need in this part of the song that's why it's just show up there you know? yeah it's everything about tools it's not just something fancy it's just and it's know. also not just uh, about uh, pedals i feel when we were talking about the new shoegay scene i feel that sometimes people try to start with the sound first, and this means pedals first, because I want reverb, and I want this and that, and chorus, and whatever, fuss. 
But uh, yeah, we feel that when we write songs, especially when Lemmy is writing songs, like most of them are just on acoustic guitars. So it's acoustic guitar, then it goes into yeah. them, and then it goes into the effects, mm -hmm. yeah. and not the other way around. So gear is important for us, of course. We have a lot of it, and we love it, and it's cool, and we like playing with all our stuff, but it's like in the end when you just have an acoustic guitar and that's it, well yeah. then that's it. You can still you can still write a song on that. Yeah, some crabby 808, you know, just doing, that's, that's mostly more bombastic than any other rock stuff around. Yeah. So actually it's, it's all about just doing new or fresh stuff, you know, for yourself. Just get mm -hmm. a challenge to don't really get involved in something, just to stay out. Just, yeah, let the feelings. I love a lot of equipment. That's quite easy, you know. Just around this time, there's a lot of bands really playing only with just, you know, just preamps and stuff like directly in PA, you know. Kemper. That's, yeah, yeah just, Kemper, well, Kemper is a really extensive version. Yeah, but of course, yeah, but it's also small and you can, you can yeah. carry it around. That's cool for people and also like smaller uh, combo amps and I know a lot of people like that. But we're like in big, we, we like it you big. You want to get it, you know, just the feeling of the rehearsal room, yeah. the live situation. Mm -hmm. That's why we step up in the rehearsal room and really set up our set, just mm -hmm. beam the volume. Yeah. To get a really cool backline sound. Mm -hmm. And then to present this version of us to the people mm -hmm. at the moment we're just playing live. So it's not just like grab some amp and then the engineer guy just fix it for you. That's that's not our uh, intention. We just wanted to get our coloring and our textures right into the people. That's why we just have all this stuff around course. So it's we just you know, we can just channel it from here, you know. Yeah. Yeah. How much we wanna dry out or how much we just stand it back. Yeah. Yeah. And what's next for Jaguar? Next, yeah, uh, surprise, actually. <laughs> actually, we were, like some, like a year ago, we were thinking about releasing a new single. What happened next was like, hey, maybe we should do an EP. That's cool though. That's like four or five songs. That's better than just, than just a single with yeah. like two songs. Now, <laughs> happened that uh, our label asked us to, to, to do an album instead. Not an EP, better an album because it's gonna be cooler and more attention and everything. We're like, okay. <laughs> well then, we went from single to album, and so that's yeah. what we're working on right now. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you have some new songs for us as well. Let's yes. Write. Like uh, we played two older songs that we just played from our album Wing Thing, and the next two songs are not recorded yet or not released yet. Uh, better said. So we're gonna play those for you. And we can't wait to hear them yeah. whenever you're ready.
Thank you so much. That was Jaguar in the Slim Dog Sessions live from Manahuita. Thank you so much for being here, guys. And uh, keep following us at Slim Dog Records. And see you next time. <laughs>